How y'all doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, I, I got my phone right here, so uh, I see Miss Sheila. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, and Aunt Jay, Aunt Jay, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you please share this message. Uh, this, this is my second time uh, preaching before you all tonight, and I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. <laughs> Why y'all wait? I'm going to share a few announcements. If you see somebody that's not on, please uh, relay the message. Uh, we are starting Bible study, in-person Bible study, small groups, uh, Thursday, November the 5th. Um, at 6 p.m. Uh, you can RSVP on our website. Uh, so again, please relay the message if you see somebody uh, or don't see somebody that's on, please let them know. Uh, the next announcement that I have is uh, free candy next Friday, this upcoming Friday. Uh, it's a community event. It's free from 5 to 7. You know, bring your kids, your Nephews, you know, we love to see them, give them some candy. Uh, hey, Miss Kipney, how you doing? Hey, Angel, how you doing, baby? Please share the message, okay? Again, if you just logging on, uh, we have a Bible study uh, starting on November 5th in person. Uh, at 6 p.m. and you can RSVP on our website uh, and we also have an event this upcoming Friday free candy from 5 to 7 it's a community event and it is free you do not have to pay anything you just come and get some candy from New Generation Church that's right please share this message I'm gonna try to get started in a, a few minutes I know you Y'all, some of y'all might want to watch some football, or some baseball, uh, some Netflix. I don't know, but I, I don't want to hold you too long tonight. Hey, how you doing, Anaja? Please, please share this message. I think the Lord has uh, put a word on my heart to share with you all. Um, if it uh, can't help you, maybe it can help somebody that's close to you that may be dealing with this. Uh, that what we'll be talking about tonight. Hey, Miss Linda, how you doing? How you doing, Miss Linda? Hey, y'all. I'm going to try to get started by maybe 645. Mm, that's two minutes. That's two minutes. Uh, again, if you just logging on, uh, November 5th, we're going to start in-person Bible study, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, you could RSVP uh, on our website. JT, what's up, bro? Share, share the message, man. Uh, and on this upcoming Friday, uh, it's free candy. Uh, bring your kids. We want to give them some candy, show some love. It's a community event, and it's free. That's right. How you doing, Miss Deborah? Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to try to get started in, in one minute because I, I want to be a man of my word. Coach, Coach, how you doing? Y'all, Coach made uh, us some jambalaya, some ribs. He can cook so good. He, Coach, you, you got the anointing, man. You got the anointing. How you doing? Ooh. Please, please share the message. I'm, I think I'm going to start in a few, well, really one minute, maybe 30 seconds now. But I, I'm going to preach. I, I want y'all to enjoy the, the rest of y'all night as well. Okay. Well, it's 644. Uh, so I'm going to go on and get started. Uh, before I start, I, I just want to thank Tremaine, Tremaine Harris for believing in the calling that God has on my life, for allowing me to serve the Lord with you all. I want to thank Ahmad for just making my transition to New Generation Church smooth, um, helping me with anything I need. And uh, like Coach, uh, thank you all for uh, taking me and my wife out to eat and uh, 
being so hospitable, uh, cooking us some real good food, praying for us. We uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, so tonight I want to uh, preach and teach on a subject that we encounter every day. Uh, it's everywhere in entertainment. It's like our society just puts it on the forefront. This is a sin that I struggle with personally for years. Uh, and it's something, a sin that can destroy families, uh, destroy lives, and destroy futures. Tonight I want to preach on adultery. Uh, so if you if you uh, live in it in the year of 2020, if you turn on the radio, you, you just want to listen to some old school jams, but they put on WAP by Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B. Uh, if you watch Netflix, maybe you had a long day at work, you just want to kick it, but your favorite show has a, a sex scene in it. Uh, or maybe if you just, like we was on Facebook, you, you log in on Facebook and you see a, a, a seductive picture, a, a, a lustful video, you're like, man, I just wanted to connect with my friends. Uh, tonight, uh, I believe that uh, in the book of Matthew, Jesus teaches his disciples on the Sermon on the Mount how to live for him and glorify him. Uh, and I believe that he calls us to make a war, and that is the war on adultery. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and 30. Uh, through 30, excuse me. Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 through 30. So I'll begin reading. Uh, if you have your Bible, please follow along with me. Uh, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, Do not commit adultery. But I tell you, everyone who looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. So Jesus says a mouthful, but we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to see what the Lord is saying. Uh, so Father, God, we thank you for today. God, thank you for your word. God, we uh, thank you for allowing us to worship you um, in the safety of our homes. God, please um, allow your spirit to uh, meet with us tonight. Please give us clarity. Uh, please speak, speak through me. God, please be glorified and uh, give us wisdom on how we can win this war on adultery. God, we love you. Uh, we trust you. We praise you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So you may be asking, Henry, I heard your, your opening statement, but what is adultery? I'm glad that you asked. So adultery is having sexual relations with anyone other than one's spouse. Okay, that is adultery. You may be asking, where did it come from? I'm glad you asked that as well. In the Old Testament, God gave the nation of Israel 10 commandments to keep shortly after he freed them from slavery. He gave them 10 commandments and the seventh was do not commit adultery. Uh, in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, of uh, God's people were to fall, uh, fall short and commit adultery. These people uh, were put to death. We see this in Leviticus uh, chapter 20, verse 10. Uh, God designed marriage. He designed sex to be in marriage. Uh, and that is why this was so serious and is so serious today. Um, God's will for us is to be holy, sexually, sexually pure, and to glorify him by doing so. We see that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. Uh, my first question is, are you committing adultery? My second point is the expounding, and this comes from verse 28. Jesus says, but I tell you, everyone who looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You may be saying, Jesus, you said what? What are you trying to say tonight? Jesus is not destroying this law. He is not coming to abolish this law, but the Bible says he comes to fulfill it. So Jesus is, is leveling up this command and he's coming for our hearts. He's saying you may not commit the act of adultery, but he's saying adultery can still happen in our minds. Um, so if you choose to lust for someone who is not your spouse or they are not your husband, your 
your wife, but you are thinking and plotting on having sexual relations with this person, Jesus says you've already committed adultery with that person in your mind. We can also see that, that this probably comes before the act, and I want to give you all an illustration. Uh, it comes from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11. Uh, we see uh, the giant of the faith are, are a psalmist, um, a king, King David. Uh, the kings go to war in the springtime, but David did not go to war. David was in his place of rest, his bed, his couch. He was chilling. He was kicking it. One day, David went to his palace. I can only imagine he, he, he on top of everything, and he see the animals, and he see the sky. He's like, man, that's a nice sky right there. Uh, uh, maybe that's a, that's a nice bird. Uh, look, at, look at this palace. It's so nice. Thank the Lord for blessing me with this. But David let his eyes get him in trouble. David saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba taking a bath. Now, now, now David... He could have just said, hey, that woman is beautiful, that woman is pretty, that woman is attractive, and just went about his day, went back to the couch. But David lusts for this woman. He desired this woman. He was coveting this woman to sleep with her. So David committed adultery in his mind. You see that? David committed adultery in his mind. He's like, I'm going to sleep with this woman. But that wasn't enough for David. David used his authority and his power as a king to bring this woman into his home. David committed adultery. He had sexual relations with a married woman. Do you see that David committed the, the, the mental act of adultery before physically committing adultery with this woman? My next question is, are you committing adultery in your mind? Lord, help us. My next point is the discipline. Okay, so look at verses 29 and 30, the first parts. Uh, Jesus is saying is, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown in hell. Then he says, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. So it seems like Jesus is commanding us to cut out our eye and cut off our hand. Uh, it, it sounds like Jesus is commanding us to self-mutilate, to self-amputate. Uh, is he saying this? Because Jesus, I, I don't have a, a stimulus check. I don't have money to do all of that. But Jesus is not saying or commanding us to self-mutilate. But Jesus is commanding us to be radical with sexual sin. Jesus is telling us, uh, he's speaking in figurative language, so we will be serious about not falling into adultery. I want to give you all another illustration that comes from Genesis 39. Genesis 39, uh, we, we uh, saw how David uh, handled sexual sin on that occasion. But Joseph, he handles it a little bit differently. So Joseph uh, is a man who's faithful to God. Uh, he's uh, successful. Joseph has a job, a J-O-B. Joseph, uh, the Bible says he's handsome in form and appearance. So boom, and he's kind of uh, built, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but this man, Joseph, uh, worked for somebody named Potiphar who was an, an Egyptian ruler. Uh, Joseph was a, a great employee. Uh, he blessed the home because the Lord blessed his home. Uh, jo Joseph loved God. But Joseph had a problem. What is that problem? Well, Potiphar's wife was tempting Joseph every single day to sleep with her. Now, I can only assume, I can only use my imagination, but this woman is married to a successful man. So she probably has all the money that she needs to keep herself together. I can only assume that this woman has it together. I can only assume that this is a bad woman. This woman probably had the, the fragrance, uh, the most fragrant perfume. She uh, probably went to the hairdresser every day and her wig was secured, her 
eyebrows on fleek, her, her face is beat. This woman has got to have it together if she's married to Pop. This woman was coming after Joseph every day, not every other day, every day. Joseph, sleep with me, Joseph, sleep with me, Joseph, come here. And Joseph was focused on pleasing the Lord. Joseph wanted to love the Lord. He wanted to obey God. He didn't want to commit adultery. Joseph was faithful, and he was thinking about this woman's husband. He wanted to honor Potiphar, the man that he was working for. But Potiphar's wife, she was just focused on sleeping with Joseph. Mm, mm, mm. One day, it was just Joseph and Potiphar's wife at the house. It could have been easy for Joseph to sleep with this woman, to, to have sexual relations with this woman, to commit adultery. I mean, it was just them at the house. Nobody else would have known. But watch what Joseph does. This woman grabbed Joseph. I can only imagine aggressively grabbing Joseph. Come and sleep with me. Like, look at, look at my fist. She probably was like that on his jacket. Sleep with me, Joseph. And Joseph did not stay in that house and sleep with her. He didn't go to the couch. He didn't go to the bedroom. Joseph ran out the house. Joseph departed from the house. He skedaddled. Joseph left the vicinity. Joseph didn't want any parts. He was out of sight. Joseph, I believe, is an example of what Jesus is talking about. Joseph was radical about not falling into adultery. So you may be saying, okay, that was a long time ago. Uh, I'm not in that circumstance, but what does it look like for me to be radical regarding sexual sin? For us in the year of 2020, uh, like we stated before with the song with Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B, I believe that if we are hearing some songs or some lyrics that are causing us to stumble or feel a certain way, I believe that we should maybe cut the radio off or uh, change the station. Maybe even cut the car off, park on the side of the road, maybe say some prayers to the Lord. Lord, that song almost took me there. Or maybe we on Netflix. You know, maybe you know you, you just want to watch some Netflix. Uh, your favorite show, your favorite movie, but they, they, they causing you to sin, fall into sexual sin, even just thinking about it. Maybe you need to change that show or turn it off or uh, give somebody your, your Netflix password and, and log out of it. It's super serious. Maybe cancel you, your subscription. You say, man, I, I paid $10, $11 a month. I'm not doing that. But Jesus is telling us that we need to be serious regarding sexual sin. Maybe if Facebook is causing us to sin, hey, maybe log out. Don't stay on there. Maybe you need to delete the app off of your phone. You have to do something radical to not fall into sexual sin. And this one, this one is a uh, very personal. Uh, this is something that we've all uh, maybe had some type of dealing with. Uh, if we are watching pornography, we need to be very serious about this. We need to close our tabs or put restrictions up on our devices, confess, our sin, uh, uh, get rid of the devices till AT&T, we can no longer have an iPhone 7. Or maybe we need some accountability. Hey brother, hey sister, I'm struggling with this. Can you walk alongside me and help me in this matter? Are you willing to be disciplined in the area of adultery? Because Jesus commands us to be radical in this sin regarding this scene. My final point uh, is the reality. Uh, we see this in uh, 29b and 30b. Uh, it says that it is better that we lose one of the parts of our body than for our whole body to be thrown into hell. Now it could, it would be easy to say, hey, let me check this off my box. Let me uh, be serious about seeing. Let me do what Jesus is saying. But even if someone really cut their hand off or really 
cut their eye out. They still will have another hand to, to sin with. They still will have a, another eye to look at inappropriate things with. I believe that the, the reality is the only way that we can have the, the victory in the war uh, against adultery um, is to have a, a changed heart and an eternal perspective and the power of God. You may be saying, Henry, but you just said this. But Okay, I hear you. How can I have a changed heart? Uh, the Bible says that uh, we who are in Christ become new uh, creatures. We can only have a changed heart, I believe, by trusting in Christ, turning from our sin and trusting in Jesus, um, acknowledging what he's done for us. And maybe you're a new viewer, like, who is Jesus and what has he done for me? So basically, um, maybe in no more than five sentences, Jesus lived a life we could never live. That means he lived perfectly. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, the, the same death that we deserve. Uh, he was buried and he arose from the grave. Uh, three days later, hundreds of people saw him. Uh, he is ascended into heaven. And he's uh, in, on the right hand of the Father. One day he is coming back to reign forever. That is the gospel. And if you trust in Jesus, you trust in what he's done, you will be saved and and not only that, but you will have a, a changed heart. That is how you can receive a changed heart, an eternal perspective. Think about this. We'll be on this earth no more than 120 years, but we will be in eternity forever and ever, a long time. So if we have this changed heart, and we understand how faithful God is and the things that he's blessed us with, families, and jobs and he's been so faithful to us and when we die we'll be in heaven it is not worth falling into sexual sin and and and, and having our lives destroyed and ruining our witness we should want to be in right standing with god and be effective witnesses for christ uh, as we invite people to church and share the gospel with them we want to uh, live a life that is above reproach do you have a changed heart tonight do you have any eternal perspective and you may be asking how can i have the power of god i believe that if you fellowship with god if you abide in him uh, you will be able to bear fruit so what does that look like hey spending time in god's word reading scripture studying scripture praying worshiping hey fast if you have to fast that helps as well As I come to a close um, in this message, uh, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, a woman in John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. This is a woman who uh, was caught in the act of adultery. So this woman probably thought about it, and then she did it. She was brought before Jesus by the religious folk of her day, the, uh, the teachers, these holy people she was brought before the son of God uh, it says she was caught in the act of adultery so I can only assume that this woman was probably unclothed in front of hundreds of people she was probably ashamed embarrassed regretful of what had happened she maybe was crying like why did this have to happen to me these people came to Jesus they wanted to kill this woman. They, they, they wanted to put her to death, going back to the old covenant rule. And they wanted to accuse Jesus because they wanted to kill him too. Jesus stood up to these people. He said, uh, the one without sin among you should be the first to throw a stone at her. Her accusers were people who were sinful too. Her accusers probably was committing adultery the act behind closed doors. Her same accuser, people who probably all thought about sexual sin all day long. Eventually, her accusers left because they were in sin, but Jesus stayed. Jesus did not condemn this woman. Jesus did not send this woman to uh, eternal punishment that she deserved. Jesus did not talk about this woman. He did not put her down. He did not slander this woman. Jesus forgave this woman. 
I don't think he heard. This woman was caught in a, an adultery. She, Old Testament law, she was supposed to be dead. But Jesus forgave this woman. And Jesus saved this woman. In fact, Jesus loved this woman. Um, after saving her, he said, go and sin no more. Tonight, um, there may be someone who is struggling with adultery. Maybe you're struggling with pornography or thinking lustfully or uh, committing the act of adultery, having sex with someone who is not your spouse. Tonight, you can be forgiven by God. Tonight, you can be equipped and empowered to win the war against adultery. But are you willing to be forgiven? Are you willing to trust in Jesus? Are you willing to be equipped and empowered to win this war against adultery that we have to face each and every single day? The Bible says that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. Tonight, you can be forgiven by God. You can be saved and set free from a, a life of sin. Tonight, you can make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, hearing this message, please ponder on this. I want to uh, bring a mind up, and I believe that he'll close us out. Thank you, Pastor Henry, for that message. Uh, I don't know about you, but that was a powerful and bold message. Uh, I'm so thankful for young men like Henry who is willing to preach the message, uh, not just preach a feel-good gospel, but preach what Jesus said, preach everything that Jesus said. Uh, this is the type of message that we all need to hear. Sometimes it's not just about feeling good. Sometimes it's about hearing what Jesus Christ wants us to hear at that particular moment. And I'm so glad that we have a young man here at New Generation Church that has the fear of the Lord in his heart. So thank you very much, Pastor Henry, for preaching that message. And just like he said, maybe that person is you. Maybe, maybe it is you that you're saying that I need Jesus to help me get through this time in my life. Uh, maybe that's you that, that, that you're saying that, that, that I don't know how to get out of this situation. I, I need help, but I don't know how to ask for help. I, 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 I try to get out of it, but I don't have the, the power to get out of it. And you're, you're absolutely right. You do not have the power to get out of your situation. The only person that possesses that power is the power of Jesus. And that is who can get you out of any circumstance. That is who can get you out of that circumstance. So if that is you, let's just pray together. Let's just um, go to God in prayer. And we believe that God can, can deliver you from anything this particular day. So just pray with me. God, you're awesome. You are great. Father, whoever that is that is dealing with uh, adultery in their heart. Father, we just pray the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to convict that person. To lift them out of that and to replace it with forgiveness and to, re to replace it with whatever it is that you need, God. To replace it with love and to replace it with faithfulness to replace it with great relationships and relationships that you have called them to be in, God. God, would you just give them that power that they need to connect more with you, Jesus? Connect more with you, Jesus. Would you give them that power that they need to, to, to get out of the relationship that they are not called into and get them into a better relationship with you? If you do that, we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Man, if I, if I had a friend that was just headed down the highway on the wrong side of the highway and he was about to die. I promise you, I'd scream and be like, bruh, you're going down the wrong side of the highway, move. And that's the type of message this is. It's screaming, bruh, you're headed down the wrong side of the highway, move. <laughs> that's the type of message this is. It's just trying to pull you, it's trying to get you away from a direction they can cause you to die. The scripture says the wages of sin is death. And don't nobody want us to die except for the devil. So we love you, man. We thank you. Uh, right now, I want to transition into uh, offering. We are doing amazing things at this church every single month. 
Uh, we take care of our uh, senior members that are over the age of 61. We give them $250 a month. We have over, I think it's like between 10 and 15 members that are between the ages, or over the age of 61 years old. And so we give them checks every single month. Uh, like Pastor Henry told you, uh, in, for the entire community, the city of Conway, we are giving away free candy. So all you got to do is pull up here to the church. We're partnering with the uh, daycare right here on the side of us. And we're going to just be giving out candy all all that evening from 5 to 7 on this Friday. Uh, we just do all type of incredible things for the community. So uh, we just invite you to give. Uh, we, we invite you to worship God through giving. Uh, you, you can follow the instructions on the screen. Uh, you can cash app. You can mail it. Uh, you can stop by the church and drop it off in the tithes and offering box. However it is that you desire, you can. there's also a link that you can click uh, to just go on there and do uh, uh, pay by debit. And so feel free to just give to the church, partner with us as we serve the city of Conway, partner with us as we serve those who are in our church. Just partner with us, sow seeds, so that we can do the work that God has called us to do. Amen. Well, uh, it's been a great evening. Uh, we are in prayer for our pastor. Uh, he, has, he, he is experiencing a loss at this particular uh, time of his life. And so if you would, let's be in prayer for him. Um, he is a, a good man of God, and so let's just be in prayer for him and his family, um, his wife and his kids and his grandkids. They are a big, good family that's, that's tight together, and so let's just be in prayer for all of them um, in, in, this, in, in this time of need. Actually, let, let's, 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 let's pray again. Let's, let's, let's pray right now for our pastor and his family uh, as a church family. God, we just say thank you for uh, who you are. Father, right now, uh, we just ask you to be with uh, Pastor Tremaine, uh, ask you to be with Keisha and their kids. Uh, Father, uh, Tremaine lost his grandfather, and only you know what he deals with um, in those times that when nobody is around. So, Father, we just ask you to give him the strength that he needs, the peace that he needs, the love that he needs to just operate how you would ask him how you would be pleased with him operating. Father, give him the space and give him the, the, um, the environment to grieve how you would allow him to grieve. Father, he was very close with his grandfather. and just want to say thank you for uh, the relationship that they had. Thank you for the life of his grandfather, um, how he deposited so much into Tremaine. And so, Father, would you just cover his entire family? Would you cover all of those who have been affected? Um, and just give them the strength and give them the peace and give them the internal unity that they need to push through this time. Let them grieve and let them come out on the other side with joy, uh, knowing that their grandfather lived a life that, that you were pleased with. We do that, God. We'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all, we love you and we thank you. We look forward to seeing you all on next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. To God be the glory.